I would say that, you know, most locators that are out there these days, you know, it's, it's, it's just a list of dealers, contractors, and, you know, at, at best, the person's going to pick up the phone and, and call. But at that point, you know, are they going to say, hey, I, you know, got your number off of this uh, website, or are they just going to say, I'm looking for, you know, a roof, I'm looking for a deck, I'm looking for whatever. Um, and there's, there's a disconnect there. Welcome to the Smarter Building Materials Marketing Podcast, helping you find better ways to grow leads, sales, and outperform your competition. All right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, alongside my co-host, Beth Popnikolov. And today we're talking about the manufacturer and dealer relationship. It is a relationship that over the last, gosh, what, 18, 20 months, almost 24 months, has been strained because of supply chain, availability, pricing, et cetera. And so we want to tackle these problems head on. We want to talk about some things that we're seeing in the industry, about how you can be more effective in your relationships, how you can build those bridges, and ultimately, how can you sell more through your dealer partnerships? I'm excited for our guests to join us today because they're going to be able to help us answer not just how do we build those relationships, but how can digital actually support it? Because often we come at it from the other angle where digital seems to hinder manufacturer dealer relationships. So first, I want to welcome our guests. We have Joshua Rich. He is the president and CEO of Bullseye. And we're also happy to welcome Brian Baker. He's a digital strategist from Dodecahedron. He's been working in the building materials industry for several decades. They both bring incredible experience and expertise to the table, and I'm excited for this conversation. So thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Excited to be here. Awesome. Thanks for, for joining us on the show today. For our listeners, give us the 30,000 foot view of, of, of what you both do. CEO of uh, Bullseye, of course. And uh, yeah, we've been uh, building locator solutions for over 20 years. Um, we started uh, in uh, 1998 um, and, and really uh, uh, worked in a variety of different industries, a lot of retail, a lot of uh, um, franchise types of businesses. Uh, but recently, I'd say in the last uh, four or five years, we've really started to focus um, on providing technology to support building materials manufacturers. Um, and uh, and that's that's our, our focus right now. Brian, what about you? Uh, so I uh, I sort of help companies uh, when you when you're dealing in the digital space and someone comes to you and says, I want, I deal with what happens between that and the and the outcome that they that they want. Uh, so that can that can be you know, designing a digital product or piece of software that could be uh, how do they reach their customers in a given channel? Uh, it could be how do they measure? How do they find the network and find customers that they want to reach? Uh, and really, it, we take a little bit of a holistic approach uh, to realizing their sort of company's digital vision. That's great. And so I kind of teed up the show a little bit by talking about the relationship between manufacturers and dealers. And I'll just, you know, lob this. Uh, this question over there to both of you. But when you look at the relationship between dealers and manufacturers today, like we've had dealers on our show and like things have not been great recently, <laughs> you know, for a lot of different reasons, like whether it's, like I said, price hikes or things like that, or price increases, excuse me, or, you know, supply chain issues. I'd love to hear from the two of you because you've got a lot of not only experience, but a lot of touch points between both parties, both dealers and manufacturers. What are you seeing? In relationship to the current state of the industry, and then secondarily, what are you seeing that's working for manufacturers to improve those relationships as we look at 2022 and beyond? I know from the manufacturer side, a lot of people are trying to progress to e-commerce, right? And there's this, there's this huge fear of, uh, are we going to disrupt our channel? Are we going to disrupt these relationships that we have? Um, and you know, I think really a smarter thing for them to do is to take their dealer networks or their installer networks. And bring those forward inside their own their own digital properties. Uh, if you if you are a manufacturer, right? There's nothing more valuable you can do for uh, somebody who's selling your products for you than to create visibility for them and to drive business through them. Uh, 
there's this sort of path, I think, that they, that they could ultimately take to e-commerce that is really about lining up those channel partners, right? Rather than trying to replace them or, or supplant them with some, you know, um, online service or an Amazon or something like that. And I think that it really comes down to this, to how visible they're going to make those partners in, in their website, in their website. Um, so for example, if I have, if I'm a foreign company and I have a network of installers, uh, it's, you know, really about marketing them, right? Uh, I know they're going to sell my product and install my products, but how can I support them? How can I advocate for them? How can I drive business through for them? So, and I, and I, <laughs> and I see it, uh, you know, a lot from the perspective of, of the manufacturer and, and even sort of <clears throat> how digital strategies are, are shifting. Um, because I think they're looking at uh, at opportunities to leverage the the, uh, the the contractors or dealers and and the locations uh, and get them more engaged in in uh, in selling their their products. So, you know, if you're a manufacturer and uh, and and you've got a program to train contractors on how to install your product, um, and you're able to give them different certifications and and leverage those certifications. Uh, to to uh, to give them exposure uh, through your website, um, to give them uh, the ability to to market and promote themselves, um, then they're going to be more more in, engaged in selling your your product. And so so we're seeing that um, with a lot of manufacturers. And and of course, you know the challenge is, you know, how do you get all of your dealers to to participate? And, and great dealers, qu- great uh, point. <laughs> how do you we're get- very interested to hear the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because, you know, some dealers are a different level of technological sophistication than, than others. Uh, some are, you know, they've, they've been around for a long time and they, you know, they, they don't want to adopt new technologies. And so I, I think that, that as a manufacturer, um, you need to look at it as, as you know, there's, there's a transition here and, and people are going to continue to adopt new technologies and laying uh, investment into that now. Um, and encouraging those that are willing to participate in the technology. And, and of course, they benefit and they get the rewards of, you know, uh, sending them new business and new opportunities. And I think that becomes a, a feedback loop, a positive feedback loop, and, and uh, is over time going to, to be sort of the, the future. You know, you're going to be conducting uh, those relationships through, through an online experience. So, Joshua, that leads me perfectly into my next question, which Brian, you mentioned something important, which is, you know, how are we furthering what dealers are doing and bringing that into, you know, the digital ecosystem of what manufacturers are able to control? There's a lot of concerns or pushback that I know manufacturers hear when they start to be more forthcoming with who their dealers are and those dealer networks on their websites. Just as one example, is there a way that you've seen either results or a possible solution for concerns where dealers start to say, well, we don't want to be driving that traffic to your website. That traffic should be coming to our website. Are they going to see a dip in traffic? Are they going to potentially lose leads that they would otherwise get? How would you respond to that? Um, you know, uh, uh, if you're talking about in the context of a uh, manufacturer's site, right, uh, when you when you move through that website experience, right, somebody has either in the, there's a content marketing strategy there or there's a product catalog there. Somebody has looked that up on Google. They've come through to your website. They've read through all the materials that you've provided. And your sort of bottom of the funnel is uh in a lot of cases, it's going to be go to here's time to go to a dealer, or it's time to go to an installer. Um, and in that, you know, in that case, it's not you're not really replacing uh, those guys' function. Their websites tend to be much more general, right? Whereas the manufacturer has an obligation uh, to create a bias towards their particular product or their particular service. Um, one good thing about that is you can start to create a chain where you're moving somebody down the funnel, and it's like, oh, okay. Uh, now I can actually see amongst my dealer locations, uh, you know, who might who might have a showroom. Where can I go see these things hand on hands on, uh, or even who specifically should I talk to at a given uh, dealer or location? So uh, I've done work before in the, in the roofing space. I know that you know if a roofing contractor goes to a 
a roofing distributor location, right? They sell all the brands there, right? So how do I make sure that who I'm connecting them with is going to sell my product or going to sell my brand, right? And that's really what you want to make sure that you're doing on the manufacturer's website is you're creating a bias for your brand uh, through your marketing efforts or through your product uh, capabilities. And you need to make sure that you pass them all the way down the chain to somebody that's actually going to, going to fulfill that. Can, can you give me an example, Brian, of how to do that well? Like, because that's the one thing we hear a lot is like, as a manufacturer, let's say you connect the dots for whether it's a contractor, a homeowner, a builder, whoever it might be, and you get them in front of that dealer. What, it, what happens in the background to ensure that when that lead is handed off or that connection is made, that the, the person a- ends up choosing that manufacturer versus going, well, I've got a better relationship with so-and-so, so I'm going to sell their product, even though that you know, this other manufacturer brought me the lead. What are some of the things that you see that are working? Well, first of all, when somebody comes in and and they right they fill out a lead contact form or they they call a, a phone number that we're tracking, um, you want to sort of package that lead up uh, that you're going to hand off to the uh, distributor or dealer, uh, and that means if you gather a little bit of information about their project, and in some cases things are less sophisticated, in some cases things are more sophisticated, but you've got a little bit of information about their project, you know where they came from, you know what they were looking at. Uh, maybe you've attached an offer or, or some kind of a reward to them uh, and you pass them off, right? Now you have an ability to follow up uh, with that location uh, once you've got that kind of person packaged. The other piece is you want to make sure that you're sending them again to the right person at a given location, right? So you as a manufacturer, you've developed a relationship with a distributor or dealer. Who is the person that supports you at, at a given branch? You want to know who that person is. That's who you want the leads to be going to. Uh, and, you know, to someone that's going to be friendly. So, you know, you've, all, you've completed a number of hands-offs here from, you know, we started out on a, probably a Google Google search. They looked at a few websites. They came to your website. They went through. They picked a dealer distributor. They moved all the way down. You're always going to lose some, right? There's really nothing you can do to completely plug it. But I think you can create a high level of visibility in there and start to create just a, a little bit of accountability with partners. Uh, it's, you know, it's, hey, I'm, I'm dr- I drove all these people to you. Right? I sent you 100 people and... You sold one. So what's like, what's going on here? And it gives you sort of a, a service area that you can go and work on your, your relationships with uh, as well to improve them. I, I, w- I would say that, you know, most locators that are out there these days, you know, it's, it's, it's just a list of dealers, contractors, and, you know, at, at best, the person's going to pick up the phone and, and call. But at that point, you know, are they going to say, "Hey, I, you know, got your number off of this uh, website," or are they just going to say, "I'm looking for, you know, a roof. I'm looking for a deck. I'm looking for whatever." Um, and there's there's a disconnect there uh, because then it becomes much easier for the dealer or whoever's selling the product to uh, recommend somewhere where they might have a stronger relationship, or maybe they're, you know, incentivized in, in some form. Um, but when you start to look at an opportunity to s- capture that that lead and that opportunity. And for the manufacturer to participate in in the, the handoff itself and make sure that you know there, there's sort of branding in the communication and that that person gets a, a confirmation email that says, hey, you know, we just uh, um, you know sent your information to this dealer. They're going to be following up, but in the meantime, here's some uh, literature on the product that, that you selected. Smart. Um, the, the dealer, you know, gets that lead and and they know that yes. Uh, somebody is requesting a specific manufacturer's product, and uh, and 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 by being more involved in that that handoff in that relationship, I think there's an opportunity for the manufacturer to influence the the purchase, and that's sort of the the beginning of that. And then, of course, there's the the follow up and the, the tracking that you know you want to try to do to really understand what happened with the final disposition of that opportunity. Who do you think is doing it well? Like when you look at manufacturers, you both interface with. What manufacturers do you think are handling that relationship of both connection and follow through? Well, if I can put you on the spot. Um, I can say that uh, LG is doing a really good job in the uh, the HVAC space. Um, they have a, a network of premium uh, premier uh, dealer installers um, and, uh, and they're, uh, they're getting leads um, on a regular basis. They're following up. There's, uh, there's an integration with uh, Salesforce on the back end uh, that is providing uh, uh, information back to sort of the, the, the you know, our platform, Bullseye, um, so that they've got the reporting and can really see 
uh, what's going on and, and how those leads were converted. Um, so I think that, that LG is a, a really good example of someone who's doing a good job. As we're at the end of the year, I can imagine that a lot of manufacturers are assessing their marketing collateral, their marketing tech stack, whatever that is, website, social media presence, and obviously dealer locator. And frankly, Zach mentioned at the beginning of the show, we're hearing dealer locators be something that comes up in conversations more and more, partly because it's become more apparent how frequently the channel is switching where they buy based on availability. So all that being said, if I'm a manufacturer and I'm assessing my dealer locator, or frankly, lack thereof, can you give me a checklist of, you know, a dealer locator for it really to perform in a way that's going to make a difference for both you and your dealer from a sales standpoint, it needs to have these, you know, three to five to seven pieces. Otherwise to Joshua's point, it's just literally basically like a list, which is, I imagine like that was like a dagger to the heart of some of our listeners being like, Oh gosh, mine is just a list. That's me. It's me. So (laughs) if you want to move beyond the list, what would that checklist look like? I love that. I love this. Like I'm about to take notes. I'm, just gonna preface it. I'm like, let's, <laughs> let's hear it. I mean, I think the first transition is you want things to be sort of rich and visual. Uh, you know, nothing. I mean, if you talk about creating, it's like, here's a list of business names and addresses, but if you really want to create trust, uh, it's, oh, here's actually a picture of the location. Here's a picture of their showroom. Here's a picture of the guy that I'm going to meet. And there they are, right? It really lets you know that, uh, somebody's home there, right? And they're alive on the other end of this connection. It's like, oh, I, I know who I'm going to meet now. So I feel a lot safer about talking to them. Um, so that's one thing that I would say. I would also say that, um, you know, the if, if, we, if you kind of look talk about just sort of the list analogy, uh, there doesn't tend to be a lot of options for filtering or connecting to people to the right dealer location for their situation. So if I'm, for example, if I'm looking for a roofing contractor, it's like, oh, well, I need somebody that can also do gutters, or I need somebody that can't knows how to do slate roofing. Uh, And do I have to call everyone on the list and ask them, or can I kind of, you know, can I kind of get down to that and make sure I'm making a good solid, solid connection. Yeah. And along the lines of, uh, you know, rich content and and getting a feel for who's on the other end, I I'd say that the accuracy of the data is, is really critical. Oh man, that's good. That's that like needs to be retweeted. Yeah, and and the accuracy and, and the depth of the data, which which I know is 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 challenging. But you know, if if you have accurate hours, for example, you know when, when a contract is available, when a dealer uh, showroom is open, uh, that's going to go a long way to uh, you know developing customer trust and customer customer confidence. Um, so that's a that's a big one. Another big one really is, is particularly now because of uh, you know the demand issues or the supply issues. You know, is it a product in stock? You know, is is there availability? Um, does this particular dealer carry the products that uh, I'm I'm looking for? Um, and and the more uh, the more you can provide accurate data and 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 accurate information back to the customer, the more they're going to trust uh, those and 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 feel like they're in a better relationship as well. Yeah, one thing I've seen in, do, in dealing with manufacturers are, and some of this just has to do with the history of their, kind of how their websites came to be, right? It's, uh, they they were product catalogs, right? So that's what they did. They took their product catalog, they put it online, and then at some point somebody said, hey, we got to add a list of our dealers. Uh, but because they weren't e-commerce oriented businesses to begin with, uh, they weren't really thinking about you know, how do I actually take a visitor and move them down a path to conversion? So one thing is actually kind of an, an easy fix for a lot of folks is do we have clear calls to action on our website? So uh, for a manufacturer, that's where to buy or, you know, get it installed if they have a, if they have an installer network. Um, you'd really be surprised at how often, you know, the, those things you find missing from, from their websites. Like, okay, great. I just, I looked at your product. Where, where do I get it? Right. Uh, but like I said, they came from a cat sort of a catalog mindset. Uh, and they really need to make that transition. That's great. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the show. If someone wants to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? You can contact me at jrich at the bullseye locations.com, or uh, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, I'd say find me on uh, just look up Brian Baker on LinkedIn. You'll be able to find me right away. 
Brian, we'll link to your email too. I will not attempt to spell dodecahedron on the podcast. <laughs> That's right. <but laughs> we'll try to link to that too. But for our listeners, I you know, hope you enjoyed this show. If you, I will say we are right around Thanksgiving. If you enjoy this show, go on to the podcast store on Apple iTunes. Give us a like, uh, give us a five-star review. We'd, we'd welcome it. If you want more content like this, go to venvio.com slash podcast to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Zach Williams alongside Beth Pavniklov. Thanks everybody. Thanks everybody.